Did you guys um did you guys hear about the um Shaw Rogers merger? Apparently it's gonna create lots of new jobs and uh, get uh, remote communities fiber access and stuff. It's great. It sounds good. Wait a minute. We can be sure we're getting rogered. Kudos to them for ringing our bell. Fools fall for Fido's flanker flim flam. Tell us to act a virgin when we're clearly being fucked again. That's right, Canada. The oligopoly operatic is back. But this time we're getting sold a in the telecommunications sector. In Canada, there are three wireless carriers to rule them all. Each has about a third of Canada's market share, which is weird, right? Why are these companies so perfectly split between Canadians? Well, who cares? That's why. They're all the same, they cost the same high price, they offer the same crap service. People are just sorted into three baskets. You walk into a random store, often the one that happens to have a special that week, and uh, that's your wireless provider for the next decade. Each carrier also has its own flanker brands, which give the illusion of competition. But $10 off a complete ripoff is still a ripoff. But this is a story about hope, so let's look to the sky. Now you wouldn't think it, but the sky above your head is a giant highway with multiple lanes of wireless traffic. To prevent crashes, the government licenses who has access to the different lanes. They do this through an auctioning system, which happens when different licenses expire, or sometimes when a new technology like 5G comes along. These auctions usually require seriously deep pockets, especially if you want to get the whole country. If you don't get the whole country, you at least need a bit of the spectrum to kind of horse trade with later. But you'll notice I said usually. Back in 2008, the government did something good. Good on you, government. When they were auctioning off some of the wireless spectrum, they set aside some for new entrants to the market to spur some competition, because otherwise the big three providers would have just outbid everyone as they had before. So wireless startups like Public Mobile, Mobility, Wind Mobile, all got going around this time and took advantage of the competition encouraging program. The government has largely kept with that plan of barring a big three from buying everything at these auctions. So even large regional enterprises like Quebecois Videotron have gotten in the action and become operators, buying Spectrum and adding a wireless division. So what happened to our brave little startup hobbits? This shop over here used to be a public mobile. But what happened to it? And what happened to its Spectrum licenses? Well, in 2013, TELUS purchased it. Like Fido or Virgin before, it had been turned into a wraith by its new master. It's now a self-service brand, operating on the TELUS network. Whom do you serve? TELUS. Their stores are now a couple of hot dog stands in a mall. I don't think that this merger created any jobs. In fact, I think like almost all mergers, it did quite the opposite. But it's still better than what happened to Mobilicity. Oh boy. Here's a viral campaign of them in 2010 outside the Rogers office. Phone contracts are flipping off. Cell phone contracts are flipping off. Extra fees and bill surprise. Extra fees and bill surprise. That's what you get from the big three guys. That's what you get from the big three guys. Flash mob, very 2010. Grandpa. Yes, glorious, gloriously awkward. Anyway, they were purchased by Rogers. Oh. And uh, yeah, they were totally disemboweled. Not even the brand lives on. They were merged into one of Rogers' flankers, Cheddar, Chatter, I think it is. Don't really know how to say it. You know that it's from uh, 2010 because they don't want to use an E. Right, Rogers? The government let the deal go through on the grounds that the spectrum stay as intended with a smaller carrier. The Spectrum was inherited by a most unlikely company, Wind, which now goes by Freedom Mobile, the final hobbit. However, it's not just startup hobbits out there. There are regional providers which are kind of like regional powers. The first is Videotron from Quebec. Now, if Canada is Middle Earth, uh, Videotron would be the dwarves. They hide in their mountains seeking riches. They care nothing for the troubles of others. As much as Videotron has Fortress Quebec to wage a war from, it would still be a war. They seem content horse trading the spectrum to get what they want. You know, they've gone and they've cut a side deal with Rogers for national support and they kind of stopped advancing so aggressively into Ontario. 
However, there is one more to the west. It is in men that we misplace our hope. Freedom Mobile was bought by this regional provider of the West, of entered a fellowship, the only surviving hobbit from this government initiative, and their spectrum is now in their care. And you know what? Since 2008, mobile wireless prices in Canada have generally trended downwards, with a lot of thanks being owed to the work of this one little company and its regional protector. Freedom Mobile, in most cases, offers the lowest price for each basket in regions where they offer service. Why do we all now have access to unlimited data plans? Freedom did it first, and after a year of bleeding customers, everyone else had to start offering their own. But this brings us to the problem. That regional provider that Freedom is now owned by is an Albertan communications and cable company called Shaw. Men are weak. The race of men is failing. That's what's now happening. The only serious independent wireless company in Canada is being absorbed as part of this deal. Instead of earning those customers, they will buy them. They will take the spectrum and kill the competition carried on it. Check out how a business analyst on Bloomberg viewed the merger. You have to keep in mind that a big part of the upswing in competitive intensity, it was really triggered by Freedom and Shaw Mobile. So when you remove that from the equation, it's conceivable that the competitive intensity in the wireless market starts to normalize a little bit, turns more favorable for the incumbents. So I would actually be liking uh, the, the wireless incumbents, all three of them, Rogers, Bell, Telus, in that backdrop. So basically what he's saying for people in the stock market is that those three big telcos are going to benefit from this and see their stock prices rise. Because all of them want to see the return of the good old days before Freedom Mobile, with the backing of Shaw, started kicking them in the dick for five years straight. This dynamic is tempting to see as some sort of conspiracy, but reality is so much simpler. These companies are fat and lazy and doing great for their shareholders like that. As long as the other big companies are cool, no one undercuts too much, Everyone makes bucket loads of money. So with no real ideas for gaining more customers, they both grow and protect themselves by absorbing competition. They have a blob. <laughs> when you talk to commerce people working against these oligarchs in Canada and different sectors, they always say, we have no plans to sell to blah. But it's kind of like, you know, like I have no plans to eat a plate of shit. Wow, that's a lot of money. Um. Just uh, give me a second guys, I'll, I'll just be back with you in a moment. All the startups in this space require a lot of money up front, even if they got their spectrum for cheap. So they raise their money from venture capitalists and friends and family. But because a, a third of everyone we know has been lining Roger's pockets for decades, they make an offer that these shareholders will not refuse. Life changing amounts of money, right now. not maybe in 20 years if something else doesn't go wrong. And I should make the point that most of these startups, like most startups, weren't even viable. They were looking at losing all their money or becoming filthy rich. With hindsight, you can see the Rogers Shaw deal coming for decades. Shaw being cozying up to Rogers, going way back to things like their internet alliance 20 years ago, and they really avoided competing heavily in Western Canada. I don't know what's up with our antitrust laws. It's a separate issue, but something's wrong there as well. Both Shaw and Rogers are also family affairs, with Shaw's and Rogers on the boards. Unlike with Bell or Talus, there's a lot more of a personal dynamic, you know, a mano a mano thing going on with these companies that has enabled a very long game to be played here. So who's on our side during this? This deal will need to be approved by the Competition Bureau, the Ministry of Innovation, Science and Economic Development, and the CRTC. If this purchase goes through in its current form, it will be a huge cross-government fuck-up. But we're in the opening stages here of the Corporate Canadian Playbook. How do you feed the Canadian government a lemon? First you take your lemon. No one wants that! So then you sprinkle a, a little bit of sugar on the deal. What do you need to say so that the government will eat it? We're gonna invest in infrastructure for, for rural and indigenous communities. Wait, so you have $20 billion to buy a competitor that couldn't provide a service to rural customers until this merger? Oh, uh, 
Well, we're going to create a, a, a high-tech business um, opportunities um, with the merger. Yeah, Rogers, TELUS, companies that just scream innovation. You know, cheap high-speed internet to millions of businesses would probably do a better job of that than anything that your oligopoly could come up with. We won't be increasing fees uh, for, for a three-year period. Oh yeah, like you did with Fido before you bumped them up to the same price as everyone else. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're going to be um, creating a lot of jobs um, in Alberta. We're going to be creating a lot of jobs. Really, closing down a head office and relocating it to Ontario with no way for you to guarantee what happens long term will create jobs in Alberta. These guys lobby lemons to the government so much that they somehow convince them that our country is just like super lucky to have them. So lucky. So profitable. The federal government already has a massive fund to sweeten infrastructure building deals. And that and the new customers is still not enough to do your jobs? Fuck off. You would have to be a total rube to fall for any of this superficial shit. Rogers has made a number of positive commitments to increase jobs, service, and investment in Alberta if this goes through. Look at this fucking lemon muncher. The plan outlined by Rogers and Shaw would make significant net job growth in Alberta, especially stupid. in high paying, high tech jobs. Idiots. Uh, the merger of, uh, proposed merger of Telus and Rogers. He doesn't even know the names of the fucking companies being merged. Look at his face. That's a man eating a lemon. <laughs> What's likely to happen in the end is some sort of conditional over-regulated sale, similar to the one that we saw with Mobilicity. Oh, well, oh, all right. As long as you uh, meet these uh, priorities um, and keep a, a set price for a certain number of years, and uh, well, then you can go ahead with your plan. That would suck. That is sugar. Hopefully, though, on this one, we can get them to divest Freedom Mobile. So Freedom becomes an independent business again and can do its own thing, keep growing, and owe no one anything. Yes! The bigger problem here is we keep getting this steady force that erodes competition in any of these oligopoly sectors. The first sale of Mobilicity reduced competition, but the second sale we're facing now is, is the destruction of a decade of progress, and something that's actually having a really positive impact for Canadians right now. You can see this everywhere. Check out the banking sector. ING Direct comes in and it gets bought out by Scotia and it becomes a flanker brand and it becomes shittier every single year. These oligopolies are persistent and outlast the government and regulators that work against them. They're also lazy and avoid competing, even Shaw and Videotron. They're kind of coasting. I've talked about how much we need political reforms to spark competition. I'm gonna lower the goals. Let's talk about the next election and the Canadian Conservative Party. The Conservatives have a serious problem, which means that we all have a problem. Ideally, when you go to vote, you get presented with policy platforms from all parties that have good ideas. A great election for me is one where I go, oh, that's pretty good. Oh, I like that one too. Where you're spoiled for choice. But I've talked about this a lot with my other independent friends. All the photos are independent, copyright. And God, the Conservatives have been having a very hard time coming up with anything new to vote for. I feel like they're kind of a victim of their own success. Neoliberal ideas, which the Conservatives championed in the 80s, basically won and became the status quo. Between our two North American peoples. Free trade, globalization, deregulation, getting the state out of running things like airlines and logistics companies. These used to be things that were universally opposed by my leftist friends. Back then, they were the ones trying to keep things the same. Maintain the union. Oh, keep government ownership of these things. Fight globalization. Globalization's evil. But now every Canadian government, you know, quietly works on free trade deals. The equipment for making this video is probably fucking twice as diverse as the International Space Station. The government has pretty much sold everything that makes sense, apart from liquor shops. And now, who has the ideas for change? A friend of mine gave me this book a few years back. You know, it's packed full of ideas. Everything from like uh, universal basic income and, uh, and shorter work weeks and that sort of thing. But most of these ideas are things that my intellectual kind of left of center friends say, um, including the guy who gave me this book. Now it seems to be the conservatives who are the ones dragging their feet and, and whose brand is resisting change. 
who cancelled the Ontario UBI trial, you know? For me and many other independents, we find it hard to vote for the party that has no ideas beyond no. It's not inspiring, it's not leading the conversation, it's just reacting. Oh, well not that. Oh, well not that. Oh, well not that. I would like some more options. So how about this? Conservatives have always maintained that they're the party that is good for the economy. And you know what is good for the economy? Competition. So be the party that is focused on making Canada's economy competitive. So don't allow any more mergers in this sector. Rogers, sure, not gonna happen. Party's over. Break the pool cue, throw it between them, fight for our dollars. Why can't the Conservatives be the party that is pro-consumer and ready to do what it takes to get the Canadian economy fucking kicking ass? And especially in this case, why the fuck would you let the largest service company in the Conservative stronghold of Alberta relocate to Toronto, right at the point that the province is desperately trying to get out of petrochemicals and into services. There's already a 30% vacancy rate in downtown Calgary. What are you doing? It is time for a new playbook. I like oil and gas. Justin Trudeau sucks. It is over. You're the only party on the right and you keep losing elections because you have a losing strategy. <laughs> this oligopoly problem is built into Canada from the building of the transcontinental railroad and the associated corruption. We always had this relationship between government and corporations, but it's not the 1800s. And I think on most of this stuff, the companies outplay our politicians. And in the end, we'll all lose, companies included. Our oligopolies often feel like the Detroit auto industry. Iconic brands that over time fall behind and made shittier and shittier vehicles. But at least they were America's shitty vehicles until the gap in quality and price just became so large that the whole thing couldn't continue. Our fat, lazy oligopolies don't have long to get in shape before they get crushed. We need them to be lean and mean if we want these industries to remain Canadian. You can already see it's kind of embarrassing having Elon Musk coming in and solving our remote internet problems that we couldn't get our shit straight on for decades. The first indigenous community to get Starlink. You know, bang for your buck, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna change the world. And then what comes next? You know, what happens when Starphone shows up? It's all coming, guys. There are so many techniques to get these sectors more competitive and up to the level that they need to be. Now some are being tried, like the Spectrum auction stuff, there's a lot of good things happening there. But we need to see this as a national project and we need a party that takes this on because nothing good comes from our companies being inferior to their global competition. I don't wanna choose between paying too much for services for the rest of history or losing entire industries because they aren't very good at what they do. That's fucking embarrassing. How is it acceptable as a policy for a country? These companies do a disservice to Canadians in the present, and unless something changes, their weakness will ultimately do a disservice to our descendants in the future. We can be sure we're getting Roger. They tell us to act a virgin when we're clearly, clearly being fucked again. Bonjour. C'est une uh, view uh, public mobile, oui? Oh, that place, yeah? Public mobile, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I went there, I bought a phone, I got the plan with them. The beginning was good, it was $25, unlimited internet, unlimited everything. And then after, right away it changed, they got bought out or something. 